Hey, greetings, everyone. Gleekon here again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft. I am going to try to bust out a few, so hopefully you see published in your feed that uh, that I've that there are a few cranking out. I'm gonna I'm gonna bust out at a feverish pace because we have a hurricane bearing down upon us, and there is no telling once it hits how long it will be before we have power and that, that sort of thing. Um, so. That, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to pre, pre kind of load some things as well. And we'll just see where we go. On our last episode, we read a, kind of a dark chapter where um, it was the novelization, right? Arthas Rise of the Lich King when Arthas went to Northrend and b found Muradin, which was cool, and then burned his men's ships. And then in a tw darker twist, the novel does that Chronicles doesn't, the mercenaries he hired to burn the ships he turns on, blames them in front of his men, and they and they murder them in cold blood. So he's he's gone to full on evil now. Like in Stratholm, he murdered the innocent, but there was some psychotic justification. Now he's just evil. Like the ends justify the means kind of thing, and and, and it's a stretch. He doesn't even try to think of like not evil. Like resp he doesn't even try to think of other options. He just goes for the first one that he knows will work ruthlessly. All right, so stay a while and listen to this one. It's called Champion of the Damned. We haven't quite caught up in the novel, but I'm wondering if the next chop chapter in the novel is going to con contain a lot of stuff. Like, sometimes that one skips forward a lot. <clears throat> Arthur's Menethil returned to his base camp just as the Scourge were closing in around his forces. The Lich King's voice whispered from Frostmourne, urging the prince to feed the blade. And feed it he did. Arthas carved through the undead with the fury of a winter storm. The humans rejoiced at the sight of their prince and his newfound power. No one knew how high a price he had paid for it. Arthas didn't give his troops a chance to rest. The Lich King told him that Malganus was somewhere among the undead. The prince believed that if he could find the Dreadlord, if he could kill him, then he would save Lordaeron. Arthas rallied his soldiers and launched a counterattack. Casualties soared among the humans, but the prince ignored the losses. He forged onward until he had found Malganus. The Lich King did not command Arthas to stand down. This was the entity's first step toward freedom, a chance to eliminate one of his most powerful legion handlers. The Lich King issued a single order through Frostmourne. Arthas plunged the rune blade into the Dreadlord and vanquished his foe. The remaining scourge scattered into the wastes. The human survivors celebrated the victory, but Arthas did not join them. He wandered alone into Northrend's frigid wilds, where the Lich King stripped away the last shreds of his humanity. Dark knowledge flared through the prince's mind, and he learned to wield necromantic powers, just as his new master did. Days later, Arthas returned to his camp. His skin had become deathly pale, and his hair had turned bone white. Gone was the Prince of Lordaeron. In his place stood something else. The first of the Lich King's newest Undead creations. Death Knights. Arthas Manethil slaughtered his followers and Frostmourne feasted on their souls. Some arose from death as simple scourge minions like those that roamed the East Weald. Others were granted a different fate. Arthas transformed them into fearsome, fearsome Death Knights like himself. The prince didn't linger in Northrend. He rallied the rest of the scourge to his side and prepared to return to Lordaeron. It was time to go home. <clears throat> the Death Knights. The Lich King's Death Knights shared the same name as the infamous undead soldiers who had served the Horde in the Second War. They had much in common, such as command over ne necromantic magic, yet their origins were far different. Gul'dan had forged the first generation of Death Knights by fusing the spirits of fallen orc warlocks to the decomposing bodies of human knights. And this is sort of footmen, knights, just any soldiers that have been raised by the Lich King, which these are the Death Knights that we actually know as the playable class. The fate of Malganus. Malganus's death infuriated the other Dreadlords, but they did not punish the Lich King. <clears throat> the entity convinced the demons that the slaying was an unfortunate accident. Arthas Menethil had not been under his full control yet. Now he was, and the Lich King promised that the Death Knight would never again raise a hand against the Dreadlords. As far as Arthas and the Lich King knew, Malganus had perished. Such was not the case. When the Dreadlords crafted Frostmourne, they had shielded themselves from its power. 
The blade had not devoured Malganus' soul. It had simply hurled it back into the twisting nether. In time, the Dreadlord would be reborn into a new body. And I think in the Stratholme dungeon, he's he's the boss, one of the, of the two of the two wings, one of the two. Which explains why he's not gone for good. All right, it's official. He is, now he is not the Lich King, but he is the form, everything but the crown. He is there. I guess he might need that armor too, but <clears throat> he's just, he's basically the Lich King. He's just waiting a little bit of an upgrade. All right, you got this episode in the pipe, five by five. I appreciate everybody so much for watching, for listening, and I will see you next time on Lore of Warcraft.